So another key element of our examination is to assess the back of our cat's eyes and this is important. It gives us an idea as to whether or not our cat is suffering from systemic hypertension. Between 20 and 30 percent of cats with CKD are suffering from systemic hypertension and many of them will have abnormalities evident on a fundus examination in spite of the fact that lots of them will still be seeing normally, will have normal pupil size and possibly no external clues of systemic hypertension at all. The equipment that I use for this procedure is firstly a focusing light source, got a transilluminator head attached to an ophthalmoscope otoscope body here. You could use a pen torch but a focusing light source is definitely much better. The second piece of equipment is a lens and this is what's called a panretinal 2.2 diopter lens. And this allows us to do a procedure called indirect ophthalmoscopy. To do this procedure we need to have a dark room and that means it either has to be a consulting room which has no windows or a room which has blackout blinds over the windows. If you don't have either of those things available to you, then you can still do an eye examination, but you probably will need to dilate the cat's pupils using eye drops such as tropicamide. To do this procedure, if you're right-handed like me, then you'll probably find it easiest to have the light source in your right hand, and once switched on, you hold that by your right eye, just above your right ear. And then in your left hand, you hold the lens, which is then going to be held just a centimetre in front of the cat's eye and the cat's head will be lifted slightly towards that lens. Once you then have that position set up, keeping at arm's length, you move your head and therefore the light source until you get a clear view of the back of the cat's eye. This is a very easy technique to master within really half an hour of us doing it, I would say. This is a typical picture that we would see in a cat suffering from systemic hypertension. There are a lot of abnormalities, many of which are actually very easy to sew. This is not difficult ophthalmology. The most obvious abnormality is visible on the right hand side of the picture, where we can see there's a circular area in which everything is out of focus. And this is because of a serous retinal detachment, which has lifted that retina off, taken it closer to the camera, and all the vessels inside that area are therefore now out of focus. What we can see in this picture includes several areas of retinal hemorrhage, particularly on the left-hand side of the picture, but also on the right-hand side, there's actually an aneurysm associated with a vessel at two o'clock. And this is just waiting to then cause retinal hemorrhage in that area. Much of the retina visible in this picture is actually blurred and out of focus. And this is because of retinal edema and also detachment, which is causing the structures to be closer to the camera and therefore out of focus. And in the centre of the image, there also is an area of retinal degeneration, which can be recognised as an area which is hyperreflective. And this indicates previous damage which has occurred, because with healing, the retina actually becomes thinner and therefore more reflective. Confirming a diagnosis of CKD depends on having a blood sample in which we demonstrate an azotemia, which is the laboratory term for an increase in blood urea and or blood creatinine. And secondly, having a urine sample which shows a reduction in the urine specific gravity. And on this test, we're looking for a reduction in the urine specific gravity such that it's below 1035. It's also important to do a serum biochemistry that looks at your analysis to look for other complications that might be seen in a cat suffering from CKD, such as hyperphosphatemia, hypokalemia and anemia, for example. CKD is now, I think, a very exciting area to be involved in as a feline clinician because there's so much more that we can do for our patients. And I think in particular, if we can identify problems early in the disease, give ourselves a much better chance of providing that patient with a longer, happier and healthier life. So for example, key areas for us to assess would include phosphate levels, managing hyperphosphatemia and also proteinuria.
think the ideal way to emphasise the importance of a checkup to a cat owner is to start when the cat's well and start when the cat's young, but explain that as the cat ages, it's likely that it will develop problems and do that through your discussions with the owner that you have when the cat comes in with a, for a booster, for example, but also on practice literature, your practice website, using all available supportive literature that you can have as well, so that an owner is really as involved and educated as possible from an early stage. Any cat diagnosed with CKD needs to be managed as an individual according to its own specific needs. However, overall, the most effective treatment is still dietary management because that has been proven to improve both the quality of life and the length of life of a cat suffering from this illness. In addition to dietary management though, according to the individual's need, there may be requirements for a whole range of other treatments. For example, phosphate binders, if the cat was still hyperphosphatemic antibiotics if it was suffering from a lower urinary tract infection and for those cats in stable renal disease especially if they develop proteinuria an ACE inhibitor such as Forticor might be indicated. Correct treatment of CKD can make an enormous difference to the length of a cat's life and we're talking years now rather than days or weeks. For example, one study showed that cats eating a renal prescription diet lived on average twice as long as those that wouldn't eat a renal prescription diet. So really huge differences that we can tell our owners about. One example is phosphate restriction, where it has been shown that management of hyperphosphatemia does specifically lengthen a cat's life. And the second is, in those cats suffering from significant proteinuria, treatment of that with an ACE inhibitor, such as Forticor, can prolong a cat's life and help them to live a better quality of life as well. My biggest tip for improving owner compliance is to science on a regular basis. So for my patients, I like to see them once a month so that we can do a history and a physical examination and have a good discussion of how things are going because I, I find that irons out a lot of problems that an owner might be experiencing at home. So for example, if they're having difficulties feeding a prescription diet, I can provide reassurance and support, perhaps alternative diets for them to try. And also similarly, if they're finding medicating their cat difficult, we can find perhaps new for achieving successful pilling or, or whatever the problem might be. I think vet nurses and receptionists can play a really huge role in helping to manage cats with CKD. For a start, from an education perspective, because sometimes owners are happier to divulge information to our receptionists than they are to ourselves, um, and a receptionist may be a good person to encourage them to come in for a checkup and bring their cat in for assessment. But also, vets can be really very helpful in terms of running clinics checking cat's blood pressure, weighing cats, doing all those sort of techniques which often are quite time consuming for us as vets but are absolutely essential to optimum management of a cat with CKD.